High above the picturesque town of Martini in Switzerland lies the St. Bernard Pass. Straddling the Alps on the historic pilgrimage route between Switzerland and Italy, the pass is named in honour of the famous St. Bernard Hospice and its founder, St. Bernard of Menton. For centuries, the hospice provided welcome respite for pilgrims on their way to Rome. And the resident priests became highly skilled in mountain rescue techniques. For this reason, the St. Bernard priests would find themselves as pioneering explorers on the other side of the world, risking their lives, and for some, giving their lives, in the service of their Lord. This experience would have a profound and lasting effect on the priests of the St. Bernard mission. China is a sprawling country of over nine and a half million square kilometers with a diverse ethnic makeup. Despite its size, up until the 20th century, the country remained extensively closed off, particularly in remote regions such as Tibet. The Tibetan government was in Lhasa, where Buddhist monks shared a lot of the duties with their secular counterparts. Such was the fundamental role Buddhism played in society. Despite this, Tibet was seen as the wild west of China, with banditry being a common problem in the remote mountain passes. Around the 1850s, Christian missionaries, with limited concession of the central Qing court in Beijing and endorsement by the Dalai Lama, started to make their way into Tibet. The reception they received from the locals was as cold and hostile as the harsh Tibetan environment but this did not put the dedicated missionaries off. And by the 1900s, Christianity had started to establish roots. The original Catholic missions in Tibet were run by the French Foreign Legion, but Pope Pius XI became concerned about the safety of the missionaries and their growing flock, and felt the priests of the St. Bernard Mission could provide a better service to the community. Et puis, euh, au début du siècle, de ce siècle seulement, il y a eu cet appel à la mission qui est arrivé de façon très particulière parce que c'était donc dans la région du Tibet. Les, les MEP, les missions étrangères de Paris qui étaient responsables du diocèse, de la région là, voulaient, ont eu l'idée de construire aussi un hospice un peu dans la même situation qu'au Grand Saint-Bernard pour les pèlerins de passage sur ce col. St. Bernard of Menton set up the St. Bernard Hospice in the 11th century in order to provide respite for Catholic pilgrims who braved the snow of the Alps to and from Rome as they crossed the formidable mountains of Europe. Often the priests found themselves rescuing pilgrims who were buried by avalanches. In such cases, they would employ the use of their giant mastiffs, the St. Bernard dogs. The capable priests on skis and their dogs became a legend throughout the world. So it was that the priests of St. Bernard, with their high altitude experience, found themselves making the long and treacherous journey to Tibet. But for some, it was the danger that attracted them. Nous avons été envoyés pour euh, être missionnaires dans la partie tibétaine de la mission la mission de cantine d'Atien Lou. Et puis en même temps, il y avait cette, cette euh, <coughs> disons, cette attirance pour le, pour le Tibet, n'est-ce pas? Father Savios, now in his 90s, is one of the few remaining pioneering missionaries who found himself traveling to Tibet in 1946, at the age of 27. Ah ben oui, nous avions beaucoup de 
Euh, ils écrivaient... <rire> les premiers missionnaires ont, ont écrit pas mal de, euh, de chroniques, de lettres sur le, le Tibet. Hein, le, enfin, le, euh, le père Méli et puis euh, Bob, Bob Chaplet et tout ça. Ils ont... et, évidemment, oui, c'est un peu aussi la, cette euh, euh, envie de faire un peu d'aventure, n'est-ce pas, pour dire euh, franchement et en dehors de... N'est-ce pas euh, C'est pas vraiment eux, certaines raisons qui ont été euh, qu on, qu on, de moins que les missionnaires partis là-bas avaient de, de certaines raisons. Entre autres, une, c'était bien un peu, euh, on peut dire ça simplement, que c'était un peu euh, l'aventure vers l'inconnu. The St. Bernard missionaries first came to the region in 1931, and by 1935, they had built a hospice on a 3,800 meter high pass between the Mekong and the Salween rivers, just a stone's throw from the sacred Kawakapo mountain. The hospice served over 30,000 caravan porters that crossed the Latza Pass, providing a place to rest and shelter, as well as offering pilgrim services and supplies during those long trips of hardship. Father Savios' journey from Switzerland took a gruelling three months. He first arrived in Kunming where he studied Chinese, before moving to Aisi County in northwest Yunnan, where he would join fellow missionaries such as Fournier, Louvet, Lation and Tournay. Et puis, bon, j'avais appris le tibétain auparavant déjà avec euh, euh, le, le père Tournay. C'était mon professeur, le, bien, qui était déclaré bien heureux, bien heureux, Maurice Tornay, euh, où je suis resté cinq mois avec lui à, à Tunze, donc Tétine. Like his colleagues, Savios became fluent in Chinese and Tibetan, and soon developed a keen interest in Tibet and its people. Disons, j'ai lu pas mal de, de livres sur le bouddhisme, oui, évidemment, mais... Là, mes souvenirs, là, sur les, enfin, des visites dans les lamaseries, ça j'en ai fait plusieurs, dans la, la, à Teichin, à Tunze, n'est-ce pas, la, 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 la lamaserie, donc le temps n'était pas très, pas très important, surtout. Elle était mal tenue. Et mal... Tandis que dans le, le Tsaron tibétain, dans, dans la vallée du Salouen, là, il y avait de belles lamaseries. Though their presence in the region brought benefits to the community, there was still friction from the local Buddhist monks who viewed them with suspicion. Their acts of charity were seen as ploys to entice new converts, something that Savios acknowledged. Parce que le, le <coughs> spécialement le père qui était à Wissi, lui, il avait un dispensaire assez considérable. Assez... Oh, le, les dispensaires ont été assez ont été une bonne propagande pour les catholiques. Pour, la... pour eux, nous étions peut-être pas des rivaux, des... mais quand même, on n'était pas, pas bien vus par, les, par les, les, les lamas, disons, les lamas, les, oui. ceux qui étaient vraiment sous la, sous la guidance des, des lamas, des, des lamaseries. Despite the apparent tensions with the monks, the priests were able to develop a convivial relationship with the local community. Ça, c'est euh, la résidence de Wissi. La chapelle était dans, dans la maison, là, à, à, à gauche, à gauche. Oui, des groupes venaient danser dans la, la résidence. Euh, ce sont des, plutôt des lissous. Lissous. Oh! Dans les environs de Wissi et dans cette l'ethnie euh, Lissou plutôt. Voilà. Salut. Les Lissou et autres venaient vendre des choses à la résidence. Le père Lation euh, contrôlait tout ça. François Fournier, qui était copain avec les, les pauvres diables qui venaient par là, vous voyez. Hein. 
Donc, il y a, à, parce que le Siao Wissi, c'est là qu'il y avait euh, beaucoup, beaucoup plus de chrétiens. À Wissi même, il n'y avait pas beaucoup. Hein. Mais à Wissi, il y avait Hualopa, là où il y avait le, le petit, enfin, probatorium, séminaire, petit séminaire. L'école qui a été tenue par le père euh, Maurice Tornet. So it was that the missionaries of St. Bernard were able to establish themselves in this remote land. But they could not smooth the tensions with the local Buddhist monks, despite a decree from Lhasa that ordered local monasteries to be hospitable to the priests. Things came to a head when Father Tournay was expelled by monks from his parish at Yerkalo, today known as Yangjing, and found himself in Daichen, pondering his next move. J'ai été, je lui ai tenu compagnie pendant 5-6 mois à Tétin, à Tunze, on disait là-bas, oui. le, le bienheureux. Donc, euh, il avait déjà l'idée de, de faire, d'aller recourir aux autorités supérieures, n'est-ce pas, pour que, et puis, parce qu'il avait été chassé de, de sa paroisse, c'est-à-dire que alors, les autorités locales n'ont pas appliqué les, euh, euh, ce qu'avait décrété le gouvernement local, le gouvernement du camp. Alors il, il a voulu a absolument voulu aller jusqu'au bout, il est, et il est parti pour euh, Lhasa. This was almost certainly a suicide mission. But Father Tournay was determined to plead his case to the authorities and was not fearful of losing his life for his lord. For even as a high school student, he had written, Death is the happiest day of our lives. We must rejoice in it more than anything, because it is our arrival in our true homeland. His colleagues knew he had a slim chance of survival and expected the worst. This is a photo where they had soi-disant voulait retenir le père euh, Maurice Tornet d'aller euh, là-haut. Ça, ça. Alors euh, le père Mathion, euh, en partant de, en partant de où, ici, il le retient là-bas. Il ne faut pas aller euh, se faire tuer là-bas au Tibet. Pas. This photograph, together with this rare film footage, taken by Father Detri, are probably the last images taken of Father Tournay before his fateful trip. As feared, Father Tournay did indeed meet his end on the road to Lhasa, where he was ambushed and shot dead. C'est moi qui ai envoyé euh, les gens pour rapporter les, <coughs> les cadavres <coughs> les, de, 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 aussi, donc son, domi, le, son domestique serviteur qui était tué à juste au même moment qu'à peu près. In the years to come, Father Tournay's martyrdom became a much documented act of faith. And in 1933, he was recognized as a saint and canonized by Pope John Paul II. But at the time, it just seemed a tragic waste of life. This event was to be a precursor to even darker days that were soon to sweep across the whole of China. In 1949, the communists came to power, and in 1951, the new Chinese government brought an end to the St. Bernard missionaries' time in Tibet. Voilà, ça c'est la photo de quand nous avons été chassés du Tibet. Vous avez ici à côté de moi le père Roncalli. Lui était des deux pères des missions étrangères, des pères qui était à, avec le père Goré, le monseigneur en plein Lovet. À Wissi, il y avait le père Lation, et puis le père Fournier à Sian Wissi. Father Savios and friends were expelled from Tibet in 1952, ending up in Taiwan. Never would the St. Bernard missionaries return. But the priests could not forget their time spent in Tibet. Mais tous ceux qui ont été au Tibet ont été très marqués par ce pays. Et je crois que c'est 
le, le caractère des gens, le, la nature des liens qu'ils avaient avec les fidèles. Despite having spent just five years in Tibet, Father Savios found himself longing to return. He may have physically left China, but his heart stayed firm in the cold mountain passes of his former parish. For the next 50 years, he found himself stuck in Taiwan. But as China reopened its doors, he was able to make two stealthy trips back to the region. However, it was not until 2003 that he was able to visit his parish in Tibet, thanks to the help of the China Exploration and Research Society. And although in his 80s, Father Savius was determined to see his treasured village of Tsichang, under the shadow of the great Kawakapo, a region so reminiscent of the mountains and valleys of Switzerland. The warmth of the villagers' greeting was testament to the significant role the St. Bernard priests had played in this remote community. On a assisté à une, une cérémonie là, avec le père Roland mon, et mon, mon, The service was largely in Tibetan, something that Father Savios had been quite used to 50 years ago. But how would he cope now? Vraiment qu'on priait en tibétain, les prières, ça c'est assez facile à faire. Mais les... Pour parler couramment, alors c'est différent. Alors. <laughs> Though it was a simple service, the experience was priceless to Father Savios, who, for a man in his 80s, was unlikely to return again. Mu 你们会得帮助, uh, so go, China Explorer. <laughs> so I have to, uh, 我要感谢你, uh, oh, <laughs> 不用感谢, 感谢, uh, 我很, yes, uh, A group photo signified an appropriate end to Father Savios's trip. Si Chung today supports a strong Catholic community, with young and old flocking to church every week. Generations of Tibetans continuing to live the Christian life that Father Tornay and others like him had given their lives for. And through people such as Feng Jiguo, their teachings live on. Et il vide nobis de vita nostra, si que ter nos dimidimus de vitoribus nostris, et ne nos indugas in tentationem, se libera nos amalo. Amen. Jiguo, who was taught Latin by the missionaries, is a very active member of the church and has seen the community grow from strength to strength. Jevan suji de san yibe toko, ma sente san sibe toko, se sente wupe ko. Niwa haya tsuku, tsuku na ne jo yu tebi de si. Si Chung Church, built originally in the 1880s, has become a treasured monument in its own right. The church stands as tribute to the St. Bernard missionaries and as a constant reminder of their legacy one that goes beyond religion and speaks more of the individual character of the priests, their dedication to their flock and the personal sacrifices that made the people of Tibet hold a special place in their hearts, one that is passed down from generation to generation. For this reason, 
the China Exploration and Research Society is committed to preserving this precious, little-known history of China. In tribute to the pioneering spirit of Father Savios, Father Tornay, and their fellows of the St. Bernard Mission, they have impacted the lives and culture of Tibetans past and present, and for this reason they should not be forgotten. <laughs>